Howdy y'all, Lone Star Keto Girl here. And while I got your attention, how about you hit that little subscribe button below? That would be awesome, thank you. Okay, so today's topic that I wanted to, to hit on is uh, what exactly is a species appropriate diet? Well, let's see, let's talk about it. Okay, so you have a newborn and say for some reason you're not able to breastfeed or it's just something that you didn't really feel comfortable or want to do. Okay, so what are your options? Yeah, I had that issue, uh, not with, with my kids, but with my grandbaby. My daughter breastfed my grandbaby, but when she went back to work, um, I was a little bit nervous about maybe running out of breast milk or something to, to that degree. So um, I was went on, on a search mission to find some decent formula just to have on hand, just in case. So I had a backup because my daughter can't just leave her classroom and, you know, take care of business. So I looked and looked and looked and I scanned so, so many ingredients and they were pure crap, crap. There was nothing good, crap. I'm talking just crap. Well, the best one I could find was actually a German version, this right here, but, let me just read a few ingredients and you tell me if you think this is species appropriate. Okay, organic skimmed milk, organic whey product, organic vegetable oils, vegetable oils, palm oil, rapeseed oil, sunflower oil, organic starch, and the whole big long word of something I can't even pronounce, Calcium carbonate, another long thing of stuff I don't even know. Oh, more vegetable oil. Okay, um, let's see. Yeah, sodium sulfate. Uh, just, there's a whole list of ingredients. This is what we're giving our babies. And that was the best stuff I could find. That to me is horrifying. Okay, another thing that happened, and over the past like four to five days, my dog was starting to drink water like crazy. And we kind of thought, oh my, that's kind of like a diabetic thing or kidney failure or something like that. So we were keeping an eye on her. And then all of a sudden she started like losing her sight. Just little things we noticed and we're like, what in the world? And then like day two of noticing this, she could hardly see anything. I mean, you toss a toy at her to bonk, bonk her in the head and she didn't miss toys. She's not a goofy dog. Um, she could catch a, a toy. So we were like, what in the world? So we went ahead and made a appointment with the vet and on my birthday, <laughs> we ended up having to take her in because that was the only time we could get an appointment. And guess what we found out? She's diabetic. My dog has diabetes. What the heck? That, that makes no sense to me. My dog has diabetes. So now, guess what? She's on insulin shots twice a day. And when we were in search of finding good food for our dogs, because we were trying to get things better and better, but it, raw food is just really difficult and sometimes hard to get in, in the amount you need because we have big dogs. And also the, the right combination, I guess you'd say. So we were trying to do the best we could with you know dry food and then we started trying to implement more wet food. And we found some stuff and th this, this was the best dog food I could find. And in the ingredients, Carrageenan, it's like used as a thickener. Well, let me just tell you what happened to me when I ingest carrageenan. I break out in the nastiest rash, and I, I had it for a year without understanding what it, what caused it. I thought it was almonds because we narrowed it down to the almond milk that I was drinking when I was keto. And it, all on my forearms here, all down the back of my thighs, it looked nasty and it burned and it itched. It was from the carrageenan. Okay, so it's in the dog food. 
and that's not even, I mean, there's pyridoxine, hydrochloride, uh, sunflower oil, um, copper proteinate, and I mean, just all this kind of stuff. Flaxseed meal, guar gum, potassium chloride, cassia gum. I mean, look, look at that list of ingredients. Is that species appropriate? Do you think? Well, based on my dog's result of having diabetes, I'm going to go with no. I'm going to go with no. And I'm going to tell you something. Watching my dog, what she's gone through these past couple of days is heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. And I'm pissed. I'm just really pissed off that these manufacturers are, are putting out this crap processed foods for our dogs even. I mean, it's bad that we eat that, but what are we going to do? What are our options for dogs? Just like with baby formula, we only have so many options. Yes, I know you can do this raw version of, uh, raw milk version of, of uh, simulating breast milk, but that is extremely difficult for the average person to, to do. I mean, all the ingredients you need and, and trying to procure the, the raw milk. Sometimes it's not so easy depending on where you live. So we're reliant on these people who sell these products that are supposed to be good for our babies. No. And then our dogs. I mean, you know, not everybody has the opportunity to be able to feed their dogs a, a raw diet. And it's, it's, it's really heartbreaking what is happening to our, our I, from what I understand, there is an epidemic of diabetes, especially within, for cats. And that to me is ridiculous. That makes no sense. And it's the crap that's in the food. A lot of dog food has grains. What the hell does a dog need grain for? Tell me that. Why? A human doesn't even need grain. Uh, to me, that's just like putting poison in, in your food. There is no reason we need that. I mean, it's one thing if you have to eat something to survive. But if you're trying to thrive and be healthy and live your best life, you should eat a species appropriate diet. I mean, are you going to force feed a koala uh, bacon? I mean, <laughs> they need those eucalyptus leaves for a reason. Th that is their diet and it's very detrimental to them, right? Well, it's equally as important to other species too that they eat what they should be eating, which they would eat in the wild. And let me just tell you, dogs aren't going to be eating grain, okay? Maybe they'll have some plants. Maybe they even eat some berries, those kind of things. Okay, makes sense. But grains and carrageenan and all this other crap that's in there, these artificial this and that, no, no. And But yet we're reliant on that. And you can only get so good of a food. Believe me, we looked, we tried. We spent a lot of money on this crap. And now we're, we, we've been trans, trying to kind of transition our dogs into a, a more of a raw diet. And then this happens before we even had the chance to fully implement that. And it's horrifying. And watching, you know, this innocent dog who relied on us to feed them something proper is sickening. It's just sickening. And no, I'm not trying to guilt anybody or shame anybody because we don't know what we didn't know. And just like with baby formula, that is not about guilting a mother because that's not what a mother did wrong. That is what those crappy manufacturers have put out. It's their fault. Now, we have to be more educated but if you don't even know what what that means to you know to be able to research and all that you you're trusting because why would somebody put out something to hurt somebody right so you would think that they would have tested this they would have you know whatever and so you kind of just trust that but you can't do that anymore because it boils down to money it is i'm sorry it does money so do yourself a favor and do the research. Do not rely on these companies who claim that this is good. Uh, you know, nutrition. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah, real nutritious. So, 
please just do your research and I, and do the best you can and and don't don't let your babies end up like my dog or yeah it, it's it's horrifying to watch it is anyway <laughs> i hope that kind of gives a little bit of uh perspective and read those ingredients please and have a wonderful day and thank you so much for watching. Bye y'all.